Are you going to do anything to celebrate the paperback? I mean, I know you had a party for the hard copy. Well, I definitely want to do something to celebrate because like you said, it, it's like now we've fully given birth to give them Lala, the book. And, you know, I, I want to celebrate. I'm going in to, uh, I'm going into surgery to have my boobies done on Friday. <laughs> So I'll be down for a little bit, but the second that I'm up in Adam, I will be taking my new boobs out to celebrate my national bestseller book. What are you doing to your boobies? I mean, I could, I can make it up and I can guess a whole bunch of things, but you, why don't you tell me? You know, I've wanted them redone for a while. And then I, when I was pregnant, David, oh my gosh, they were so huge and amazing. And then, you know, other moms told me, that baby's going to suck the life out of them. And even though they're cute, still, it's like they just, everything sits a little differently after you give birth and feed your baby. So I'm just ready to get them up there, maybe a little bigger. I'm, I'm going to get my groove back. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing wrong with a little refresh, right? I feel like if, and I've always felt this way, if you feel like you want to go in and do something and you'll feel more beautiful after that, I don't think any any woman or man needs surgery or injections, but if you want it because you'll feel hotter, then you should do that. So I want my new boobies and I'm doing it. But like, do you I think you would ever, you know, write that type of book, almost like a self-help book of like having been through a certain experience like that and like what you've learned? I would love to write another book. And I, you know, I'm going to be so transparent with you. There, I, I love Give Them Lala so much. I'm so proud of this. I, and just everyone who helped this come to fruition. But there are certain parts of this book where even though they were real to me, I wrote my truth. It's strange to go back and look at those parts of the book because it wasn't real at all. That's like a tough pill to swallow. It's hard for me to dive back in to give them all. And, and again, like for me and my version and perspective on what my life was in certain parts of this book was very much real. But now with the bird's eye view, it's like for a second book, I could really dive into so many other things. And I'm not a professional on any sort of behavior, but I definitely, even with this book, Give Them Lala, I wanted people to see that like we have more in common than you think. Don't be so hard on yourself. And I would have the same agenda for the second book. But I don't think I'm in any place to be teaching people anything. <laughs> I'm just here to like create a bonding experience. Do you at least say, you know, if it wasn't for COVID, I mean, 2020, you would probably be married this point and that's when I say the universe has my back you know like that the fact that I would have we I would I tried I think four different times to to plan and replan a marriage and the fact that it was not happening and there was nowhere in this world to go to even get married it was like oh my gosh like that thought makes me euphoric <laughs> yeah the universe does have your back yes do you think like if this you know what happens in these pictures and this one incident like in Nashville like if that didn't happen I mean do you think also like the universe has your back like you would you be there still I mean you know yes yes I would I would have been stuck in that but that was the universe that was it it was like here it is there's no way for you to avoid it. And I knew right then and there, the second I saw those, I knew something's wrong and I will do anything and everything I can to, to make my exit. Well, and I've said this before, and this is no shade to anyone else that is on Vanderpump Rules like myself. And listen, you don't know as a person when you're in a situation where someone is unfaithful like you don't like I could say everything I would leave I don't know that for sure I've never been you don't know and so what like a great example for like your daughter that like to me you 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 were like see you later so thank right? you like saying that yeah you know it's 
for me, every move that I've made since having ocean, since I got, since I found out I was pregnant has been for my daughter. She is the first person and the only person that I am looking out for. What is best for ocean? And that's the move I'm going to make. Ocean has to have a healthy, happy mother. So nothing that I do is done without thinking about that kid first. Wow. Do you think, do you ever think of like, if you didn't have ocean and the same thing happened, would you, that you might've handled it differently? Oh, I would. Yes. I mean, I wouldn't think I, I would be moved on with my life and I wouldn't give one damn like, see you later. Have a great one. I may do a few episodes of like hardcore dragging you on my podcast, but you know, it's, I do have ocean thanks to, you know, the sweet baby Jesus that I have her and, you know, I'm, I'm handling it the best way that I possibly can. I'm in foreign territory and I just, I do, I do the best I can. And I don't always know that I'm handling it the correct way, but if there's one time that I need people to just kind of go easy on me, it's right now. Yeah. Do you, have, did you hear from, you know, cause it is, I mean, I say that in all seriousness, like you, I don't need to say, how are you going to handle that situation? The proof is in the pudding. And it is such, I, I think a strong example for women everywhere. Like, did you hear from a lot of women just, you know, all throughout the world of like, been there and wow, I wish I had that courage, be belief yeah. in myself, all the things that are in this book, give them la la. Like those themes are the same. Like, you know, did you hear from a lot of women throughout? So many women. I mean, the, my DMs are filled with people sharing, you know, their stories that are inspiring to me, women who are needing strength. And, you know, it's my passion right now. It'll be my passion forever. You know, I, I'm passionate about women and mothers being in safe and healthy environments and having the means to exit if they need to. And before we move on, like what is the one thing like overarching that you've learned from this whole particular experience? Ooh, I don't, ig don't ignore anything. If you feel like one little thing is off, it's because it's off and also, I, I now, when I, when I see men, if a man is describing his ex as being crazy or wanting attention, that is a red flag. Most likely she's not crazy. He's crazy. Really? Oh yeah. That is the biggest. When I see these dudes who are like, no, my ex is crazy. It's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to need to talk to this ex of yours because I think you might be the one who's off their rocker. Did you, have you heard from like the ex or, I mean, does this like bring you guys closer together or no, that's just a non-factor. Like you have your own stuff to deal with. Yeah. You know, we, we have, we have children who are obviously half sisters. So, you know, we will chat here and there, but you know, I can honestly say Amber and I have nothing but love for each other and we're in a great place and I'm thrilled about it. And you know, we've, we've talked and it's been nice. 